right, we're going to go ahead and get started this morning. Come on in, come on in. Sorry about the delay in getting the service started. For some reason, uh, our live stream just does not want to connect to the server to get things going. Uh, and so we are recording the service. How many of you know it just pays to be in the house of God, right? And so anyway, we do understand there's physical limitations. I know there's some sweet people in our church that normally would with, you know, apart from the physical limitations, they'd be here. And so, uh, but today is a special service because it's Veterans Day weekend. Uh, Veterans Day is tomorrow. And we uh, want to recognize those that have served in our nation's military today. But I thought it'd be fitting for us to stand and begin our service by saying the pledges. First, the American flag, then we'll go to the Christian flag, and then to the word of God. So if if you're physically able, would you stand? And we are going to say our pledges. We also uh, do not have a piano player this morning, but uh, we do have some piano music put into our songs. Uh, and I did rehearse a little bit with them, so just bear with me on that. Uh, I do try to keep pretty good tempo on the song, so we'll hopefully be able to sing that together. Uh, but let's start with the American flag here. And I'm going to say attention, salute, pledge, and then we'll begin, okay? Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now we're going to look over here to the Christian flag. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands, one Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again, with life and liberty for all who believe. And then we're going to take the word of God this morning and we're going to pledge to the Bible. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And I will hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. We're also going to remain standing and we're going to sing the national anthem this morning, the Star Spangled Banner. And so, gentlemen, as long as the volume's up loud, because I have hard uh, trouble hearing, uh, but we're going to sing the national anthem, just one verse of that. So, Brother Shane, there's three verses on the audio, so just make sure you cut it off. Otherwise, uh, the music's just going to keep playing with that. So, we'll sing the national anthem here this morning. wonderful singing this morning. Let's go ahead and begin our service with prayer. Father, we love you. Lord, we are thankful for the brave men and women of our country, Lord, that have served uh, in our nation's military. I believe America uh, would not be the country that it is today, of course, because of your divine hand and grace, yet also for the men and women that you have moved in their hearts to sacrifice portions of their lives. And for some on Memorial Day, we recognize those that have given their lives. But today we want to recognize those that have served, that uh, Lord still perhaps are enjoying the preciousness of life that have served in our nation's military, and we thank them. We are thankful for uh, our country. And Lord, we ask and pray that you would continue to preserve and protect uh, this country. Lord, not because we're deserving of it, but just because you are good. 
And Lord, we ask and pray for your richest blessing on our service today. We rejoice in the baptisms that will be taking place today as well. And Lord, we pray that it would uh, ignite our hearts and, and excitement in our hearts to see lives being changed here at Gospel Light Baptist Church. Lord, I pray if there's one here in our service today that's not saved, Lord, I pray today would be their day of salvation. Bless our service as only you can in Jesus' name and all God's people said. Thank you so much. You may be seated. We're going to have a short video at this time. At this time, what I'd like to do is something a little bit different. Usually, it's just we stand and we recognize you, but if we want to do a little bit more than that. If you, to any degree, have served in any of the branches of our United States military, we want you to stand, if you would, this morning. And so if you've served in any branch of our nation's military, would you stand? First, we want to give you a round of applause this morning. And, and the one that stands tallest above all of these is one up there, and that is Brother Shane Pusho. So anyway, I know oftentimes he's forgotten. I, I don't, we don't need to give him a round of applause, but we've, we've, we, I wanna make sure he's recognized for his service as well. Uh, what I'd like to do just quickly is if you would uh, just uh, share with us the branch that you served in and how many years that you served, uh, we'd love to be able to know that and recognize you in that way. So starting with Brother Jeff. Amen. Amen. Brother Chris? Uh, the U.S. Army for 30 years. Amen. Brother Tim? Uh, U.S. Army for 24 and counting. 24 and counting. Amen. Miss Tracy? Six years. Air Force, six years. Miss Joe? Uh, U.S. Army for 14 months. 14 months. Okay. Brother Carl? Air Force, four years. All right. Brother Ken? Uh, Middle East, three years plus. Three years plus. Okay. Brother Shane? Four years. Anybody that I did not recognize or that was not physically able to stand. All right, let's one last time give them a round of applause this morning. And we certainly are thankful for those that have served so proudly and bravely in our nation's military, and we're thankful for them. I know I just had our, our uh, veterans stand. Would you, would you all stand this morning? We want to sing uh, hymn 66 at Calvary. And uh, what I'm going to do, Brother Shane, I know you're up there as well. We're just going to sing the first and the last, the first and the last. I know there's usually three verses, but we're just going to do two this, this morning. We got started a little bit later.
wonderful singing. You may be seated and so glad that you're doing a wonderful job singing along with us this morning. You, you, you're a candidate to sing in our choir. We sing with soundtracks all the time, so you're good to go. If you can follow my leading, sometimes it can be a little chaotic. So anyway, uh, let me just first say for those of you that are visiting with us this morning, thank you for being here today. Uh, some are here today because we've got four baptisms and their family members, relatives, loved ones uh, that have come to be a part of the baptisms today. Uh, we want to say thank you for being here, but maybe it's your first time here. You've never been to Gospel Light. We want to say welcome to you guys, and thank you so much for being here. Uh, if you did not receive a connection card, there might be one there in the pew back in front of you. We just ask you to fill it out, and that's a way of us connecting with you, having a record of your visit. Uh, we send you a Chick-fil-A gift card in the mail for visiting with us, uh, as well as encouraging you to come back and be a part of our services at Gospel Light. We're glad that you're here with us this morning. Uh, church family and visitors as well, our next service is tonight at 6 o'clock. Choir practice is at 5. We are planning for that. And uh, we will begin a series on deacons. Uh, and so I want to encourage our church to be back. Uh, we have a couple of deacons that are up for uh, either renewal uh, or for new deacons to be installed. And so we're going to go through that process. We'll explain a lot more about that this evening. But I want to encourage you to be involved, be a part of it. Uh, it's an exciting time at our church and uh, looking forward to that as well. Uh, one of the most important events coming up is this Saturday is our fall festival. Uh, we've got, I believe, about four uh, that are signed up for chili, for the chili cook-off. Uh, if you can cook chili, if you enjoy cooking and would like to cook chili, we would love to have you enter into this competition, and uh, we'll be providing the food, the side items, I guess I will say, for that. Uh, any questions with the food side, I would encourage you to see Miss Charlotte Bruno. We did a great job on signing up for the signs sides. I think there may be one more spot for sides. So if you go to the Welcome Center after the service, there's a bunch of sign-up sheets there, and there's one more side item that needs to be signed up for. If you're able to help us with that, that'd be a tremendous blessing. Also, if you would like to sign up to help, uh, if you'd like to work a game, we've got a couple more spots that we need filled. This is the last opportunity to do so, and so we want to encourage you to be a part of that. This week, there will be a social media post that will be boosted for our church. It, 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 I want to encourage you, if you're on social media, share it, pass it along, let the community know. Uh, this is an opportunity for the community to come to our church, for us to connect with them, and we're really wanting to see them come back on Sunday. And so uh, let me encourage you, when you see that post go out, please pass that along. That would be a great help as well. Then also, our praise and pie service is not going to be on the Tuesday, the week of Thanksgiving. We're going to do it Sunday night. Uh, leading into the week of Thanksgiving. And so what's the praise and pie service? Well, it's exactly that. We come in and we praise the Lord, give thanks to his name. Kind of a special orchestrated service. It's really exciting. Uh, and then we enjoy some good fellowship and some great pie. And we've had some wonderful pies through the years as well. Once we get through our fall festival, uh, we'll make a sign-up sheet. Now, I'll mention this. Uh, it's going to need to be quick to sign up for just because of time between the fall festival and for our pie and praise service. And so make sure you get connected with that as well. Um, I did want to mention that we have an opportunity to be a blessing this Christmas. Um, we are foregoing this year our uh, Bless a Bus Kid gift drive. We've kind of examined the kids that come into our ministry uh, through the bus or car ministry is how I describe it, the transportation ministry, if you will. And a lot of the, the kids that are coming through at this time, God has greatly blessed them in incredible ways. We've had needs in the past, uh, but this time we, we don't actually sense it as a need as much as um, uh, a, an opportunity that we've normally taken in the past. But some of these kids, they've been able to explain to us how God has blessed them for Christmas. Their families have been able to take care of those gifts and needs. And so we actually... Have have been presented with a new opportunity and this is an opportunity for us to help during the Christmas season for those that were impacted by Hurricane Helene. How many ever seen the footage about all that was impacted by Hurricane Helene whether it was North Carolina or other parts that were along the coast as well and so this is through a, a, an organization called American Heritage Girls Troop. Uh, this is not only uh, uh, an organization that is for the for the young boys, but it's also for girls. 
It is, if you will, a Christian organization that is different from the Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts. Um, so they are unapologetically and very much so unashamedly uh, declaring that they are a Christian organization. Uh, and we've got several in our church that have young kids that are a part of this organization. And so there is a flyer that reads the following. It says here, Trail Life Troop, Louisiana 1225, wants to make Christmas merry and bright for those in North Carolina who were affected by the hurricane, by Hurricane Helene. It says here, we will be collecting new, unused toys, books, games, and et cetera for kids ages zero to 15. Uh, now they talk about donations are also being accepted to help furnish tiny homes, shelters for families. Uh, this extends to towels, washcloths, silverware, shower curtains, small trash cans, dorm size microwaves. Uh, the, the big thing is donations are collected through November 18th. They've got to get the stuff up there. This is kind of short notice, but we wanted to give an opportunity. Hey, here's an opportunity, church, to be a blessing. You say, how are we able to partner with this? Okay, if you've got new or unused toys that you'd like to bring, uh, we have someone within our ministry, Alicia Potter, that would be happy to get that to where it needs to be by the deadline. If you'd say, I don't have time to do that, but I'd like to financially give to that, just uh, mention in the love offering section that it is for Hurricane Helene, okay? Just mention that. We'll make sure our guys are on top of that so that way we can get those donations to you as well. Uh, if you do have any questions with that, please see Miss Alicia Potter. If there's any needs of clarification, uh, you can see myself or her. We'll be able to get you that information as well. Those are all the announcements that I have at this time. I know there was a lot with that. I appreciate your patience. Let's go ahead and stand one more time. We're going to take our songbooks to him 121, Like a River Glorious. If you're able, let's stand and sing out. We're going to sing the first and the last, Like a River Glorious. Wonderful singing this morning. If you're physically able, remain standing. Take your Bibles to the New Testament book of 2 Timothy, the New Testament book of 2 Timothy this morning, the New Testament book of 2 Timothy. And uh, the Lord has led me through this Veterans Day weekend. I think the last time I preached a message, let me get my headset here, Brother Chris. Last time that I had preached a Veterans Day message was actually uh, back in 2019, and the Lord has given me peace about a passage that, uh, just two verses here, that I want to be a help and an encouragement to our people this morning, 
and if you will, giving a spiritual perspective on the importance of those that have served in our nation's military and uh, tie the connection to the fact that uh, those individuals that served for the United States of America, they served in America's army, our nation's military, if you will. Uh, but then there are those that are God's people. Uh, we sing the song, I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never fly or the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. Some of you need to get back into children's church, right? I'm in the Lord's army. And how many, uh, how many understand we are all called to be a part of the Lord's army? We're all called to serve as good soldiers of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so that's the title of the message this morning. We take this from 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. 2 Timothy chapter number 2, verse 3, verse number 4. The Bible says in verse 3, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. If you're saved this morning, would you say amen? amen. And how many of you desire as a good soldier of Jesus Christ to live a life that is pleasing to him? That, that's our desire. And so we're going to learn how to do that this morning through the word of God. And I believe Paul wonderfully articulates that truth. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Lord, I ask and pray that you would use these moments that we have this morning to teach and preach the word of God. Lord, I pray that you would not let me say anything that I should not say. And Lord, the things you desire for me to communicate, Lord, that you would allow me to do so, Lord, in a timely way. And God, I want to be a help. I want to be an encouragement. I want to challenge our people, Lord, as, as, as Lord, you lead me to do so. And so God, we pray that you would remove all distractions aside. And Lord, that you would help us this morning to learn what it means to be a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Bless our time, we pray in Jesus' name and all God's people said, Amen. thank you so much. You may be seated. Well, I don't know about you this morning, but I am thankful to live in the land of the free and the home of the brave. And if you are as well, would you say amen? amen. Uh, I'm thankful that we live in a great country. I know there's a lot that we could say that maybe is wrong in this area or that area. It's not a perfect nation, but yet I am thankful to be a part of the United States of America that we have freedoms uh, we have the freedom this morning to gather and to worship without persecution. Freedoms are such a precious thing to the core of this great nation we call the United States of America. Ronald Reagan said it this way, freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it to our children in the bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, and handed on for them to do the same. I, I believe this weekend we have a lot to be thankful for. We have a lot to be thankful for, not only because God has protected and prospered and blessed this land, but God has allowed for men and women to be a part of this nation that have selflessly uh, foregone opportunities to live a life of their own and to sacrifice their time to serve our nation in the realm of the military. I hope that you and I would always be thankful for those that have served for our country. How many of you, you grew up in a home where your parents said, if you ever see a Vietnam veteran hat, uh, man, or if you ever see a police officer, or you ever see somebody that maybe you found out has served in our nation's military, you always tell them, thank you for their service. How many grew up in a home like that? Listen, let me tell you, as young people, or even if you maybe are up in years and you never were taught that, I think it's good to give honor to whom honor is due. And I don't think there's anything wrong uh, to give recognition to those that have selflessly given their lives for our great country. Abraham Lincoln, our 16th president, said, Honor to the soldier and sailor everywhere who bravely bears his country's cause. Honor also to the citizens who cares for his brother in the field and serves as he best can the same cause. When we look at these people this morning that have served in our nation's military, when we come in contact with people that have served, let's not just look at them as just ordinary people. Let's look at them as heroes. Let's look at them as people that we can look up to, that we can admire. I understand that not everybody that served in our nation's military is perfect, but I believe they are worthy of the recognition for them selflessly sacrificing their lives for our country. Joseph Campbell said it this way, a hero is someone who has given his or her life to something bigger 
than oneself. Isn't that what they have done? Is they have given their time, they've given their lives many years or whatever it is, few or great, to better this country so that we can have the freedoms that we have today. And while tomorrow is a day of remembering those that have sacrificed a part of their lives for this great nation, can I say this? May we never forget those in the Lord's army who have sacrificed their lives in service for Jesus Christ and for his gospel. How many are thankful that someone in the Lord's army brought you the message of the gospel? Somebody served in the Lord's army to bring about the most important life-giving message, and that is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, one of the greatest things that any person can ever do for someone else is to sacrifice or to give their life for the betterment and goodwill of another individual's life. See, we've got that all backwards in America. We're all about bettering our own lives, aren't we? We're all about consumption and let me get this and let me get this and let me get this. And yet we need to be of the mindset of how can I take the message of the gospel and better somebody else's life, change their lives. And I believe the best way that we can express our gratitude for their service, whether in the Lord's army or even those in the military, is by being intentional to recognize a person's service. Hey, you know who a good person to recognize service in this church would be? Our nursery workers. How many are thankful for our nursery workers? They are the unsung heroes in the church, recognizing their service, just like we do with a police officer or a military person. We say, hey, thank you for your service. Hey, if you're a mom or a dad that has a child in the nursery, next time you pick them up, hey, say, hey, thank you so much for taking your time away from the service and by selflessly giving it to take care of my child or the children of our church. When we take time to recognize their service, here's what we're going to realize. We'll realize, especially not only with those that have served in the military, but even those that are pastors, ministry leaders, or just lay people in the church that have given their lives in service. When we recognize their service, we may come to the realization of why they served in the first place. And I believe for the military, it was to protect and to preserve the freedoms that we have. Freedom is never free. We've already heard the phrase many times before, no doubt. But we will come to the realization of why they sacrificed their lives. Why did they do that? To preserve and protect our freedoms. Woodrow Wilson said it this way, A nation which does not remember what it was yesterday does not know what it is today, nor what it is trying to do. We are trying to do a futile thing if we do not know where we came from or what we have been about. I am very concerned for the educational system in America today. And if you're one here today that's concerned about that as well, you have good reason to do so. Because the history classes that we once took in our classes are very different from those of today. We are, if you will, trying to uh, uh, gloss over or even forget or even remove portions of our history in our country that are so important. I understand that there are sins in the past of the nation of the United States of America. There are sins in the past of every nation. But for us to forget how God brought about the United States of America, how God has blessed the United States of America, I believe is a great travesty. It's a great travesty to see Young people growing up in our country not realizing how they re received and acquired the freedoms they have today. Can I say what weighs on me more heavily than that? Is there is a generation of young people growing up in America today that don't even know who Jesus Christ is. It used to be common practice. You could knock on a door. You may meet an individual that's never been to church in their life at a point in time in the past but they would know John 3.16. They would know who Jesus is. They would know about the Bible, but we are living in a society that doesn't even know who Jesus is. Here's what I'm getting at this morning. Whose responsibility is that? Watch this. If we were dependent upon the previous generation to give us the faith of Jesus Christ and to give us the freedoms we enjoy in America today. We were dependent upon the previous generation. Let me ask you this. Who is the next generation dependent upon? Us. 
Here's the question, mom. Here's the question, dad. Are we passing on the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ to our kids? Grandma, grandpa that have grandkids in your life, are you making an effort to pass the faith of Jesus Christ along to your grandkids? Uh, those of us that are adopted grandparents or adopted aunts and uncles, we may not have had maybe children of our own, but we are uh, uh, some sort of influence in a young person's life. Let me ask you, what are you doing to pass the faith of Jesus Christ, pass the freedoms that we have in America and educating and teaching them? Because if we don't, the faith of Jesus Christ will become extinct, if you will, and the freedoms in America will become extinct. The Apostle Paul is writing from prison in 2 Timothy chapter number 2. Uh, many believe that this is his final letter. This is his last one. Uh, many Bible scholars believe he's sitting in what is known as, in its present day, the Mamertine prison there in Rome. The average sentencing in the Mamertine prison was give or take about 30 days. They weren't there very long, and the reason why was they weren't planning to be there very long. These were individuals, if you will, for our vernacular, they were on death row. They were, at the, they were at the disposal of the Roman Empire, and at this time Nero's in charge. The Apostle Paul is writing what would be his last will and testament to his successor, young Timothy. And he prioritizes many different things, and there's this charge, and there's this challenge, because Timothy is going to be the guy that's carrying on the ministry. Timothy is going to be the guy that's going to be, if you will, one of the head leaders of the New Testament church and trying to push the gospel further out so that more people can know and come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. So you and I would say, hey, if we have the faith today, it's because someone like him carried that on. What does he say? And in chapter number two, you'll notice in verse number one, would you look at your Bibles there? Verse number one, he says to Timothy, thou therefore my son... Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. He says, hey, you're going to need to be strong because there's a world out there that's going to want to chew you up and spit you out. And how many of you believe that is what our world would love to do to any Christian that's weak in their faith is to chew them up and spit them out. And so we need to be strong. And notice the commission here. He says, the things you've heard of me, I want you to commit those to faithful men that they will be able to teach others also. You do understand this morning that you are a byproduct of somebody giving you the gospel. And if you're thankful somebody gave you the gospel, would you say amen? amen. So here's my question. Who are you going to give it to? Who have you given it to? Who are we giving it to? Because if we don't, who will? And I believe the decline, morally speaking, we see in America today, you want to know what it is? Christians are more interested in the things of this world rather than in the things of God. We're not passing the baton off. We're more interested in social media. We're more interested in, in, in the news. We're more interested in money. We're more interested in fame. We can't remember the last time we opened up our Bible and actually read about God and his word. And we are dropping the baton to give the faith to the next generation. And I, for one, as your pastor, don't want you to stand at the judgment seat of Christ unwarned about the importance of you do your due diligence and I'll do my due diligence to be a good soldier of Jesus Christ to make sure that we do our part to pass on the faith. I've spoken to some of you in this church. You say, I want my, my kids to have the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. Some of you grandparents, I want my grandkids to have the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, if you are not willing to give it to them, who's going to give it to them? We've got to be the ones that say, I've got to be the soldier. I've got to be the one in the Lord's army that is strong and that is persistent and that is in pursuit of passing on the faith to the next generation. Notice, if you will, verse number three, our text. After he says, all these things you've heard of me, commit them to faithful men. Notice what he says, thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. I, I want to give you three simple thoughts. Hopefully I can give them to you quick. We've got a lot of things going on today here at church, and I want to be timely. So if you'll notice three truths about a, a soldier of Jesus Christ, not just any soldier, but a good soldier. Number one, notice the realities of a soldier. 
the realities of a soldier. There's some things you and I need to be aware of. I hope you're already aware of them. But if you're not, I need to put you on notice about being a soldier of Jesus Christ. Notice what it says in verse 3. Thou therefore, my son, endure hardness. Everybody say those two words. Endure hardness. Let's say like a Sunday morning crowd this morning. Ready, begin. Endure hardness. Endure hardness. Say, that's not fun. That's not appealing. Warren Wearsby says it this way, the Christian life is not a playground. It's a battlefield. How many, how many of you, like me, have been guilty of treating the Christian life like it was a playground? And how many of you, like me, have gotten beaten up a time or two, spiritually speaking, because we treated it like a playground rather than a battlefield? And you know what? There are brothers and sisters in Christ right now that are stranded on the battlefield. Law, not lost in salvation, but they are lost waywardly in salvation because they have treated the Christian life like a playground. And then when hardship came, they, they, they never... And they're on the battlefield. They need good soldiers like you and me to understand first, letter A, notice this, the reality of hardships. Listen to me, I hope I'm not putting you on notice in newsflash, but how many understand hardships are a normal part of the Christian life? Difficulties are a normal part of the Christian life. He says endure hardness. The Greek word there means affliction, hardship, or trouble. Here's what I want you to get. The Apostle Paul does not tell Timothy that hardships are slightly possible. He tells them they are highly probable, that it's not a matter of if, but when. We know this as Christians, that trials are a normal part of life. Yet let me ask you, why are we so surprised when they come? We, we say, Pastor Scott, I know the Bible says, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. I know the trials are going to come. And then when the trials come, it's like we're shell-shocked. It's like we don't know what hit us when we need to understand if we're going to live for the Lord, trials and hardships are going to come. Paul even wrote later in the same book to Timothy about this reality. Notice in your notes or in your Bible, 2 Timothy 3, verse 10. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience. Watch this. Persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra. What persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. We, it's not a matter of maybe, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of certainty that they will come. 1 John chapter 3, verse 13, the Bible says, Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. I've never seen it like any time before, but this world is getting stronger and stronger in its hatred of God. It's getting stronger and stronger in its hatred of God's people. But don't marvel at that. Jesus says, if they hate me, surely they're going to hate you. If you're the Christian this morning, say, I'm not facing any opposition. The world's fine. We're good. The Bible says friendship with the world is enmity with God. You say, I don't feel like the devil's going up against me. Maybe you're going the same way as him. If we're going to live godly, we're going to face persecution. 1 Peter 4.12 says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you. Don't think it's weird when trials come. Don't think it odd or don't be shocked when trials come. Notice how it finishes. As though some strange thing happened to you, I would submit to you a good soldier of Christ not only recognizes that trials will come, but they've determined not to buckle when the trials come. I wrote this in my notes. Let me, let me give you letter B. Not only the reality of hardships, but letter B, the response to hardships. I'm going to give you something that I hope will be a help to you this morning. When trials come in your life, do not focus on, I'm in a trial, I'm in a trial. I'm in a trial. Don't make that your focus. Listen to me. Not the reality of your hardship. What is my response to the hardship? That is what we need to focus on. Because trials are going to come. We all agree. Pastor Scott, you're beating a dead horse. I know trials will come. 
So what we need to focus on is how am I going to respond? I got to ask you two questions. Who are you? Who are you when you face something you don't expect? Who do you become? Hey, look, it's easy to come to church on Sunday and say, hey, praise the Lord, glory to God, life is good. I'm wanting to know what you become when trials hit you outside of this building. Amen. Man, I'm faith-filled and I'm on fire and God's on the throne. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. He'll never leave me nor forsake me. Man, I'm fueled up. And then we leave and we're like, the first thing that happens is like, God's forgotten me. God's forsaken me. He doesn't love me. He doesn't care. Who do we become when trials hit? Notice what the Bible says here in verse 3. Thou therefore, my son, endure, endure hardness. Why? As a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, you don't want to be the soldier on the battlefield that when the, tr the hardship or the enemy is coming, we don't need people in the military that are going to hightail it and run. We need brave men and women that are willing to go where the battle is, to go where the fight is, and to stand strong. And I believe in America, we're seeing more and more Christians for one reason or another. They're hightailing it and leaving. It's so sad. Do a study on the statistics of the, the people who grew up in Christian homes that are exiting the Christian faith. And you know what, you know what religious party they're falling into? atheism and agnosticism they're leaving the faith for no faith at all which by the way if you're an atheist you've got a lot more faith than i as a christian have okay i'm just going to throw that out there but you can ask me about that later but our response to hardships it's twofold our endurance we need to have endurance but notice quickly here our example who's our example of enduring hardness as a good soldier of what does it say there church of Jesus Christ. Isn't he the ultimate example? Hebrews 12, verse 1, Wherefore, seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Here it is, looking unto Jesus. Say that with me. Looking unto Jesus. When trials come, what do I do? Look to Jesus. When trials come, who do I look to? Look to Jesus. When trials come, who do I look to? Look to my pastor? No. Look to the deacons? No. Look to this member of my family or that member of my family? No. Look to Jesus. Why? Because while men will fail you, men will let you down. How many believe Jesus never fails? He will never let you down. And if you say, well, he's letting me down by allowing a trial to come. Can I tell you the greatest trial Jesus ever faced? was becoming every much as bit as you are in your sin when he was perfect the entire time. He became sin, all of your sin, all of our cursing, all of our yelling, all of our screaming, all of our adultery, immorality, you name the sin, whatever it is, he became all of that. And how did he respond? He didn't hightail it back to heaven. You know what he said? Nevertheless, not... My will, but thine be done. How many are thankful Jesus didn't quit when it came to dying on the cross for your sins? I hope you're thankful for that. Because you ready for this? If he did not do that, we would have no hope this morning. Our response, who do you become? Oh, I know, Pastor Scott, trials are a normal part of life. Yeah, but who do you become when they hit? Do you become faithless? Or do you become full of faith? There's been seasons in my life that I've walked through. I was talking about this with Brother Tim last night. We went to the LSU-Alabama game, which I'm sorry, a Michigan fan went to the LSU game and probably cursed your team last night. I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> they, uh, the, the Mother Nature did us a favor in allowing rain to just shower on me that game, okay? But we were on our way to the game, and we were talking about trials and difficulties, and I opened up and shared about a difficulty in our life that we walked through by faith. My wife and I, we have two wonderful, beautiful children, and uh, whenever they behave well, they represent their mom. When they behave poorly, they represent their dad. Their good looks is all mom, all mom. The blue eyes, I did give them, okay? That is one thing I will take, for cre uh, take credit there. But we wanted to have, and we still have a desire to have another child. We uh, were, were pregnant uh, three years, roughly three years after Emma was born, and we walked through a season of a miscarriage. 
Miscarriages are so difficult to walk through. And, and I feel inadequate to speak to this because I'm not the man that, uh, uh, I, I'm the man in the situation for the woman that walks through a miscarriage. It is so difficult. It's so hard. And you wonder and you say, God, why? Why did you do this? We're serving the Lord in ministry or we're doing this and this. But I can honestly tell you, there was never a hesitation in my mind that God was no longer good, that God was no longer gracious, that God was no longer kind to me. He is good, and he is good all the time, regardless of the trial, regardless of the difficulty. Amen. There is no doubt I will, as best I can, not allow a situation to come into my life where I walk away from the faith, where I just say, you know what, I'm done. God is too good. And too kind. And if all he did for you and me was die on the cross, that's enough. That's got to be our mindset. But here's our problem. We focus on us instead of look to him. Number two, and quickly, pray for me. Number two, the restraints of a soldier. So there's not only the realities, hardships, the reality of them, the response to them. How are we going to respond? But there's some restraints uh, the, the word restraint means self-control. There's some disciplines that we need to have. And notice in verse 4, he says, No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that it, it's so that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. What is this self-discipline you're talking about? First, letter A, it's a daily battle. How many of you know we have an enemy this morning? Let me, let me ask you one more time. I'm not convinced you're aware of this. How many of you believe we have an enemy this morning? Yes. Okay. You ready for this? He doesn't take a day off, does he? No. And how many wish he would just take a day off? Maybe forever and ever. How many are looking forward to the day that he'll be cast into the lake of fire and he'll be gone forever and ever? But until then, we've got to be, be disciplined to the point of saying, okay, the Christian life, can't, it can be joy-filled. There are certainly times of difficulty. And the reason why is there is a daily battle that wages for my mind, for my heart, for my soul. And you ready for this? It's unfortunate. But many of us give place to the devil. We allow him to influence our thoughts and influence our words and influence our actions. Praise the Lord if you're saved. The, the, the demons, you could never be indwelt by a demon. You've got the Holy Spirit living inside of you. But there is such a thing as demonic oppression where someone who is not disciplined can just let anything enter their mind and be foolish enough to believe it. Notice this phrase in verse 4, no man that warreth. You see the E-T-H at the end of that? The implication is that this war is continual. Daily, it does not stop. The battle for you and I to remain pure is ongoing every single day. The battle for you and I, whatever the besetting sin is, it is a daily battle, and we must equip ourselves in the battle. But notice it's not only a daily battle, letter B, it must be a disciplined battle. You notice the next couple of words here. No man that warreth, okay? I, I want to be a good soldier, okay? So I need to be mindful that there's a battle daily for me. But then it says, no man that warreth, here's the next two words, entangleth himself. No man that warreth, watch what it says. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Shortly after joining the Navy, a new recruit asked his officer for a pass so that he could attend a wedding. The officer gave the recruit a pass, but informed the young man he would have to be back by 7 p.m. on Sunday. The recruit said, you don't understand, sir. I'm in the wedding. To which the officer responded, no, you don't understand. You're in the Navy. What is the point of the, of the illustration that, hey, it doesn't matter what the event is, there's some restrictions. You, you can't get involved with all these things that are part of the responsibility of the military. You've got a commitment. And I just believe this morning that there are a lot of Christians that 
the reason they're not a good soldier of Jesus Christ is they're so entangled with the things of this world. They're so involved in schedules and jobs and extracurricular activities, and they don't have time for church. They don't have time to serve. They don't have time to read their Bible. They don't have time to pray. Why? Because something else is more important in this life. And if you're going to be a good soldier of Jesus Christ, you can't involve yourself with everything going on in this world. My parents, my parents had a phrase that they would tell me. They said this, Tyler, sometimes in life, the best answer at the time may be no. Hey, do you want to get involved in this extra thing? Now it's going to pull you away from Sunday or Wednesday, but you want to get involved? Maybe in that case, the best answer is, no, I can't. That's right. Amen. I had no issue telling my son's football coach, soccer coach, whatever sport, hey, Sundays, Wednesdays, no. If that affects his playing time, fine. Now, I jokingly said under my breath, my son's too good for you to sit on the bench, so you're not going to be able to do that anyway. That was pride, and I need to repent. I repent. Forgive me for that, okay? It just comes out, you know? It's probably because I'm a Michigander. It's not because you Louisiana people. You, you influence me in a good way, okay? <laughs> but the point is this, that, that there are disciplines. We've got to learn to say no. We've got to learn to say no to things that are pulling us away from church. You, you ready for this? Sometimes you've got to tell yourself no. Anybody in the room this morning ever not felt like coming to church, or am I the only one? <laughs> Heard a story one time about a husband and wife that got up one morning, and, and uh, the husband was laying there, and he was like, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, no, oh, no. The wife's like, honey, what's wrong? The husband looked over and said, today's Sunday. She said, yes, we're, we're going to church. And he goes, but why? Why do, we, why do we have to get up and get dressed and go to church? Wife looked at him and said, you're the pastor. <laughs> now, my wife and I have had that conversation maybe once or twice in 10 years almost. Not, no, I'm just kidding. But there are times in which our flesh, you ready for this? We don't feel like coming back at 6 p.m. on Sunday night. We don't feel like coming to church on Wednesday because of whatever. I don't know what it is, our emotions, our feeling, whatever it is. But sometimes we've got to tell our flesh No. You ever heard the verse that says, the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. The spirit always desires for you to do the things of God. The flesh does not. Has no desire. So when you choose and I choose, and I, again, this is, this is within the context of physical limitations. I, I have to clarify this all the time. Physical limitations, family emergencies, because if I just come out and say it, people get offended by it. I don't know why. But if you have the total wherewithal to get to church, get to church. I know that's not popular, even in an independent fundamental Baptist church, but if you have the wherewithal to get to church, you need to be in church. Amen. Where else could we be and spend more time better than under God's word and with God's people? I can tell you this, whatever excuse you give the Lord on the judgment seat of Christ, it ain't going to fly on that day. Disciplined. Number three, we finish. The realities of a soldier, the restraints. Let me encourage you with a positive note, the reward of a soldier. How many are thankful? Uh, how many think it's amazing that God desires to save hell-deserving sinners like us? Yeah, and you ready for this? That's not, that's not the best part. He wants to not only save you, he wants to use you. And you know what? Every single time I have an opportunity to preach, I always remind myself, I'm not worthy of this. I'm not. I'm not. None of us are worthy of anything from the Lord. And yet, in spite of our unworthiness, he allows us to serve. And he wants to reward us. Notice, if you will, at the very end of verse 4, we're done. No man that worth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. Why? Here's the reward. That he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. The reward of a soldier, letter A, is God's pleasure. If, if, if anything else, if, if I stand before the Lord one day and all he says to me is, well done, thou good and faithful servant, how many believe that would be enough right there? That's it. I don't need anything else. I, I don't need a pat on the back. 
I don't need like, hey, all you saints, turn and look at Tyler Scott and, and give him recognition. I don't need any of that. And, and by the way, I can tell you this. One of the things my dad told me when I went into the ministry is don't go into the ministry for what you can get. Go into the ministry for what you can give. And what I want to do is say, God, I'm a yielded vessel. I'm not perfect, but I want to give everything I have to the ministry of Gospel Light Baptist Church to serve the Lord to the fullest extent that you allow for me to do. And whatever recognition I get, it's all going to go back to you. But one person said it this way. There's only two choices on the shelf. How many ever heard this phrase? Yeah. Pleasing God or pleasing who? Self. There's a lot of Christians today that are pleasing self. And you know what? I'm probably one of those too at times. I just want to please myself. We like us, don't we? We do. But we should serve for his pleasure. By the way, let me just let the cat out of the bag. That's why you were created in the first place. We were, the Bible specifically states that we were created for his pleasure. The reward is not only that we will please God, but we will let her be accomplished God's purpose. How many believe there's more to this life than just self-existing? There's a greater purpose. There's a, there's a greater thing out there than just believing that we're floating pieces of matter accidentally colliding into each other. We didn't just poof into existence out of nothing. In the beginning, God created everything by his spoken word. And he created us and created everything for a purpose. And let me just tell you, it's not for us. I believe there, there are many purposes that the scripture outlines. Fundamentally speaking, foundationally speaking, our purpose is to do everything and anything in our life to bring him glory. That is our purpose. And watch this. When the attention comes on you, guess who the attention goes off of? It goes off of him. And when you want the glory and when you want the recognition and when you want whatever it is that you want, God doesn't get what he wants. Shame on us as Christians that we think this life and its purposes is all about us. There is a greater purpose out there than just us satisfying ourselves. Paul says to Timothy, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. So here's the question. Here's where we finish. By you looking at your life right now, are you there? Are you a good soldier? Amen. Or are you the type that when the trial comes, you hightail it? You're gone. You're out of church three, four weeks. I, I, I've never understood this. I've got to get my life together before I can get back in church. And it's like the only hope you have of getting your life together is by getting back in church and getting under the word of God and falling back in love with him. And all God's people said, Amen. I hope I'm not, that's not anything new. I can tell you this honestly, there have been times where I've skipped church in the past, not since I've been a pastor here, but when I wasn't a pastor and I was still needing to be the person that I needed to be to be prepared for ministry. Ask my wife, there were times, I don't feel like it. And you know what? Not one problem that I had in my life was solved outside of church. Not one. In fact, probably most of us can testify to this. The problem didn't stay a small problem the more we forsook church. It grew and it grew and it grew. And newsflash, when it gets too big, some of you have a hard time getting back into church. You got to nip the problem right away. And you got to get and deal with it before it gets too big. And before long, instead of using the Lord's power to control the problem, the problem controls you. Church, are we a good soldier? I've got some soldiers in here that you've been serving for a long time. Keep going. Those of us in my generation, man, we better rev this thing up. Because no offense to those that are seasoned saints, but they're not going to be around forever. And we as the millennial, the next generation, we've got to step up our game. We've got to be committed. We've got to be determined. We've got to be uh, a steadfast, unmovable. 
for the sake of the next generation. Are we that soldier this morning? If not, repent. Repent and turn to the Lord and say, sorry. I'm sorry that I've been wayward. I'm sorry that I've been apathetic. I'm sorry that I've been casual. I'm sorry that I've not really cared. Repent. Get it right. And watch how God heals that and begins to use and cultivate you to be a soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, we love you, Lord. Thank you for this time that we've been able to open the word of God. Lord, I pray for this time of invitation, Lord, as those that are making their way for baptisms here today, we rejoice in their decisions. Lord, I pray that that we would examine right now. We're not thinking about anything else. We're not leaving. We're not going anywhere. Am I a good soldier? Let's not be the Christian this morning, Lord, that deflects and thinks about something else because we know the truth. Lord, there have been times, and you know this, there have been times in my life that I've been a sorry excuse as a soldier. Thank you for correcting me, (laughs) chastising me, having me hear what I need to hear so that I can be a good soldier. Lord, would you help our people this morning to have that desire? We need more good soldiers now more than ever. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. There's nobody looking around. Honestly, just two questions this morning.